Who are you? What makes you, you? Are you the same person you were last week, last year, 10 years ago? What is it that links your past self with your present self and future self? The problem of personal identity has puzzled and divided philosophers for hundreds of years, producing many different theories along with some unusual thought experiments. Let's take a look. Before we begin, we should explain what we mean by identity. A person will change in many different ways over their lifetime. Take Steve, for instance. A year ago, Steve had a beard, listened to punk rock and lived alone. Today, Steve is clean shaven, listens to jazz and has a family. In many ways, Steve has changed and we can say he is no longer the same person he was a year ago. We can say that present Steve is not qualitatively identical to past Steve. However, when philosophers talk about personal identity, they're concerned with numerical identity. So we can say that past and present Steve are one and the same person. For example, Bruce Wayne and Batman are qualitatively different, but numerically identical, as Bruce Wayne is the same person as Batman. The bodily continuity theory argues that Steve at time one is identical with Steve at time two, if and only if he has the same body at both times. But what happens if Steve has an operation and decides to replace his hands with hooks? Most people would agree that Steve is still the same person, as there is a physical continuity over time. This also accounts for the fact that although most of our cells will die and replace themselves several times throughout our lifetime, we continue to be the same person. The philosopher Sidney Shoemaker criticises the bodily continuity theory with the story of Brownson. Imagine two people, Brown and Robinson, are both undergoing brain surgery which involves removing their brains before replacing them back again. Unfortunately, Brown's brain is mistakenly inserted into Robinson's head, and Robinson's brain is put into Brown's head. The latter patient dies during the surgery, leaving only the person with Robinson's body containing Brown's brain. This person, which we'll call Brownson, has all the memories, beliefs, attitudes and personality of Brown, but the body of Robinson. Most people would say that Brownson is identical with Brown and not Robinson. The story of Brownson highlights that bodily continuity is not sufficient for personal identity, but rather it is the physical continuity of a specific part of the body, namely the brain, which is important. But is the brain even necessary for identity? Imagine a mad scientist who kidnaps both you and Steve. He tells you that he's going to swap all your memories and contents of your mind into Steve's brain and all of Steve's mind into your brain. But before he does this, he gives you a choice. After the operation, he is going to give one body $100,000 and the other one is going to be tortured. You get to choose which one gets the torture. What would you choose? Your answer to this question will give you an idea of where you stand on the issue of personal identity. If you tell the mad scientist to torture your body because your mind will now be in Steve's body, then you are effectively rejecting the physical continuity theory and favouring the psychological continuity theory. The psychological continuity theory originates from the work of John Locke. Locke proposed that a person at time 2 is identical with a person at time 1 if he can remember what he did at time 1. So if Steve can remember last Tuesday mm -hmm. when he replaced his hands for hooks, then he is identical with that person. The obvious problem with Locke's theory is that it's impossible to remember everything we do, but we also remember things incorrectly. An easy fix for this is to say that there has to be a continuity and connectedness between memories for identity to persist over time. So, if Steve can remember what he did yesterday, and yesterday Steve can remember what he did the day before, and so on, we can say that there is a psychological continuity between present Steve and past Steve. However, the psychological continuity theory means that those who lose their memories, say due to dementia, are no longer the same person they once were. The philosopher Derek Parfit takes a slightly different position on psychological continuity and argues that it is survival and not identity which is important. Parfit asks us to imagine a device called the brain state transfer device. 
which acts a bit like a teleportation machine. Once inside, it scans your body and mind before vaporizing you. It then produces an exact replica of you at another location. This replica is physically identical with you and has all your memories and personality. In this case, Parfit claims that the replica is identical to the original you. In a second example, the machine malfunctions and instead of vaporizing you, you survive and step out of the device. There are now two versions of you. Parfit argues that you survive as both people, but the transitivity of identity prohibits them from being identical with each other, as to be identical means you must share exactly the same properties, including your position in space. So according to Parfit, you can have psychological continuity without personal identity over time. There's no decisive answer to the problem of personal identity, and there are many other theories which we've not covered here. But what side are you on? Do you think psychological continuity is closer to the truth than physical continuity? Do we need a mix of both? Or do you have a completely different view? Let me know down in the comments. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe. You can watch my previous video on whether listening to classical music can make you more intelligent by clicking here, or you can click here to see a playlist of all my videos. See you next time.